With good reason, the Oscars, or as straight people who take themselves too seriously like to call them, the Academy Awards, are often referred to as the Gay Super Bowl. And that is because, well, it has been scientifically proven that gay men love the Oscars, and that every February on a very special Sunday, we gather in our gay houses and make gay foods and drink gay wines so that we can talk over each other for three or four hours, except when it's time to announce Best Actress, and then we all shut up. I wanna really say something. <laughs> Okay, so only some of that's true, but my point is that the Oscars have been associated with having a sizable gay viewership for a very long time. However, calling the Oscars the Gay Super Bowl feels problematic at this point for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, not all gay men love the Oscars. I have come to learn this the hard way, as it was the catalyst behind several of my divorces. But also, a lot of LGBTQ folks who aren't gay men do love the Oscars. And collectively, the Oscars haven't always been so good at loving us back. And the Oscar goes to... Crash. Obviously, this is a very complicated statement, but let me try and break it all down for you with this brief history of LGBTQ representation at the Oscars. Over 50 straight actors have been nominated for playing a queer character, and 14 of them have won, including Hilary Swank for Boys Don't Cry, Tom Hanks for Philadelphia, Sean Penn for Milk, and three of the four winners from last year, Olivia Colman, Mahershala Ali, and Rami Malek. Look, I'm totally okay with straight actors playing queer roles sometimes, just not all the queer roles all the time, especially when only two actors who were out at the time have ever been nominated for an Oscar. Two, Ian McKellen and Jay Davidson, which is all the more wild given it's allegedly the gay Super Bowl. Like, imagine if in the history of the straight Super Bowl, aka the actual Super Bowl, the winners were 99.5% gay. Now, in this case, one of the major things to note is that for a very long time, it wasn't really the Oscars' fault that they weren't nominating any openly LGBTQ actors because, well, there weren't really any. But if you count the number of actors who we know now were closeted at the time of their Oscar nominations, the total count balloons. Greta Garbo, Montgomery Cliff, Lily Tomlin, Rock Hudson, Anthony Perkins, Linda Hunt, Joel Grey, Jodie Foster, Paul Winfield, Ellen Page, Kevin S But for the past while, there's been some less forgivable issues. Like, whose fault is it that Oscar voters decided to give the Best Picture award that most, including me, assumed already had Brokeback Mountain rightfully engraved on it, to Crash, a film that is objectively horrible? Or to give multiple Oscars to the representational trash trilogy that is Dallas Buyers Club, The Danish Girl, and Bohemian Rhapsody? Or to just this year only nominate three LGBTQ folks, Pedro Almodovar for Pain and Glory in the Best International Film category, Elton John for his song from Rocket Man, and Canada's very own Dean Dubois for producing How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. There was like 150 overall nominees. But as I said, it's complicated. There's been a lot of good things too. Like obviously Moonlight winning Best Picture three years ago, the first film with an LGBTQ lead character to ever do so, even if thanks to an accountant who royally things up, a lot of us thought that didn't happen for about a minute and a half. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is not a joke. Moonlight is one best picture. And individual queer folks outside the acting categories have won, and not just Sam Smith. Just a few of the many, many examples include cinematographer Nestor Almendros for Days of Heaven, costume designer Irene Sharaf for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, documentarian Rob Epstein for both The Times of Harvey Milk and Common Threads, makeup and hairstylist Roy Helen, who has worked on pretty much every Meryl Streep film and one for The Iron Lady, composers and musicians like the late great Howard Ashman for The Little Mermaid, Melissa Etheridge for An Inconvenient Truth, and Elton John for The Lion King, producer Scott Rudin for No Country for Old Men, sound engineer Laura Hirschberg for Inception, writers Terrell Alvin McCraney for Moonlight, Bill Condon for Gods and Monsters, Dustin Lance Black for Milk, and Jeffrey Fletcher for Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. And a very impressive amount of LGBTQ people have made the cut for what is arguably the most prestigious individual prize at the Oscars, Best Director. 14 folks have been nominated a total of 26 times, including Gus Van Sant, James Ivory, and Lee Daniels. Except that besides Daniels, every single one of these nominees is a cisgender white man. In fact, in the 92 years of the Oscars, all but 16 of the nominees for Best Director have been cisgender white men, which is all the more reason we might want to think twice about celebrating the Oscars as the gay anything. Look, I'm still gonna watch the Oscars anyway, but in the next couple years, can we please see like Sarah Paulson or Billy Porter up there accepting an acting Oscar? Because if not, I'm done. Or I'm probably not done, but I'll be angry.